Welcome everyone to Spicy Sunday. On this Spicy Sunday we are talking damage and we are talking healers. We're going to look at the damage that all of the healers have for a potential, you know, simulation of what's going to happen in Mythic Plus on multiple targets. What is the AoE damage of healers? Because in current year it turns out it's quite important to become meta in Mythic Plus for healers to be doing good damage, right? Traditionally the healers with the most damage are the healers who become meta because that's what you want as a healer you don't always have to heal so you don't want to be rolling your thumbs when there is nothing to do in mythi plus which means it's quite good if your healer can pull out some good dps in mythi plus keys so Today we're going to be looking, I'm going to be showing you how is currently the situation in terms of AoE damage and you know even in some cases single target damage for all of the healers. Now don't forget this video still counts don't get baited by numbers at the moment to do decide which which spec to play in dragonflight this is more to give you an idea and to show you what is the current situation in the beta for example if you were to see three days from now that restoration druid for example was nerfed by 20 percent in all of their damage you would think they were getting gutted, you would think they were getting giga nerfed and they will be going straight into the bin but thanks to this video you might be able to realize that, for example, at the moment, the Restoration Druid is doing 30% more damage than everyone else. So this potential nerf in a few days of 20% of their damage makes more sense, right? So with this video, you might be having a more clear idea of where all the healers stand at the moment, what you can wish for in terms of buffs or what you can hope is not going to happen in terms of nerfs, given the current situation in the beta of Dragonflight. So we are immediately starting with the spec in most need of some help when it comes to AoE damage, because we're talking about Discipline Priest. On four-ish targets, in this case four target dummies, the AoE damage of a Discipline Priest is in the realm of 20,000 DPS. All of these healers have the same default gear from the, the beta vendors. They also have try. I also have tried to get them most, if not all, of the damage talents available in the trees. So they are not skipping out on any damage uh, nodes, for example. Now, of course, the biggest problem of Discipline Priest, as you might see here, is that pretty much all of their abilities are for single target whether you're taking power word solace or not and then you have smite you have penance you have mind blast you have shadow word death you have mind games every single one of these things is purely single target even your light's wrath your new big cooldown is still purely single target i was even cheating cheating by taking sins of the many which gives you 12 percent more damage minus one percent per every players with atonement on and i wasn't giving atonement to anyone besides myself a few times so it was even more damage than expected in mythic plus and the damage was still very very low and that's because they just don't have ways to do aoe damage they have the option of holy nova like all priests basically and that's it the only other option is to just spread your purge the wicked spread it on multiple targets maybe use divine star or halo every once in a while and then use your mind bender with your talent empowerments for mind bender which also gives you aoe it gives you a talented version of your shadow flame prism legendary from shadowlands which is not nearly as powerful because it procs off of mind blast and shadow word death but the cooldowns of Mind Blast and Shadow Word that are far too long to make this talent do damage, do enough damage in AoE. So that's the main first issue, the first spec. It's also the worst one when it comes to AoE damage. Now, let's move on and above Discipline Priest to a spec that is very easily in the 20 plus more damage than Discipline Priest. It's in the clear, in the 25 ish thousand AoE DPS damage, and that is Mistweaver Monk. Now, Mistweaver Monk, so you see from these bars where I took out all of the abilities which don't have anything to do with doing damage, you can see how many buttons do they have that can potentially either do damage or empower your spells to do more damage. They have a plethora of abilities, tons of them. So they also have quite good cooldowns because they can weave in between your White Tiger statue, your Bondas Brew, your Feline Stomp, you also will have, which is not counted in here, I haven't used it in here, but you have Touch of Death as well to do more damage and then you have plenty of other abilities. The damage isn't very high it's gonna be some 20 30 even percent lower than other specs but 
they have a few benefits which we will go and look at later they have definitely however also quite good power in multi-target situation because here we are stopping at four targets but you know Mythic Plus packs are going to be pulled in more than four at a time and they have ways with abilities that are not going to be capped at four targets so they will be able to do way more damage in more targets. Meanwhile, other specs might have way more problems with multiple targets. They want to really increase their DPS. Think about, for example, a Restoration Shaman whose Chain Lightning only hits three targets. So on four targets, it's going to be looking very good. On eight targets, it's not going to be looking nearly as good right so mist weaver is also good in that setting for for aoe damage of course it's a little bit sad to see that a lot of their damage comes from resonant fists and from the white tiger statue which are two buttons basically from the general tree of monk so it's not even theirs, they're literally borrowing it from the General Tree, which is supposed to be the, the Windwalker Monk side of the tree in the General Tree for Monk, and it's doing quite well. Their new button given to them in Dragonflight, Zen Pulse, is also doing quite well in terms of damage, and then of course the remainder is Spinning Crane Kick. Their current situation is quite well, and will actually be even better when we will explain something as we go to talk about Holy Priest because Holy Priest is very close in terms of damage, perhaps a little bit less, slightly less than Mistweaver Monk. They can get into the 25-ish thousand DPS range similar to Monk. You might be wondering how is that possible when most of their stuff is very similar to Discipline Priest, because they have Smite, they have Mind Games, they have Shadow War Pain, they also have something like Holy Fire, which is still single target, they have Holy Ward Chastise, which is still single target, so where are they getting their, their damage from if it's so close to Discipline Priest? Well, the difference is the fact that they have quite a few talents that can buff them significantly. Something like Searing Light, which gives you 50% more damage to Smite and Holy Nova if the target is affected by Holy Fire. Something quite cool that you might already be testing in the pre-patch is Empyrean Blaze. The 30 second cooldown that gives you three insta-casts Holy Fires. So you can, on four targets, Holy Fire, use Imperial Blaze and then three more insta-cast Holy Fires giving all four targets their Holy Fire debuffs and then you can spam Holy Nova for 50% more damage so you have quite some synergy there you also have another new talent, another new button you can press, Divine Ward that you can press before Chastise to give you a pretty big 15 second long buff for doing more damage so they do have quite a few better ways to do damage but, as I said, as I was going to explain, it's not nearly as good as Mr. Vermonk, even if we just show them being even in DPS. For example, Holy Fire is only hitting one target, even with Empyrean Blaze, you're gonna be able to have four Holy Fires actives, and that's because we were testing it on four target dummies. What's gonna happen when you're pulling eight enemies and you're fighting all eight of them at once? The Holy Priest will still be spreading four Holy Fires nothing changes. Meanwhile, the Mr. Monk will be using Spinning Crane Kick, Bone Dust Brew, they will be using Zen Pulse, they will be using Feline Stomp, Chi Burst on all of them. So it will be much better for Mr. Monk. Not to mention, there is the problem of healing. Yes, okay, doing damage as a healer is cool, but every once in a while you will also have to stop to heal. And guess what? Monks use Fist Weaving. TLDR, they heal while they do damage. So this damage average of Monk has even been dragged down a little bit because instead of constantly spamming Spinning Crane Kick, which is the most damage in AoE, you can weave in your Tiger's Palm, your Blackout Kick, and your Rising Sun Kick to trigger the passives of these abilities, to trigger Ancient Teachings, Teachings of the Monastery, to trigger Rising Mist, and basically all of your talents which will help you heal while you're doing damage. Also, Bone Dust Brew can also help you heal, Feline Stomp can also help you heal, Chi Burst can also help you heal, Zen Pulse can also help you heal. So, not only is Monk's damage better the more targets you have, as opposed to the Holy Priest, which is capped, pretty much, it's also better because they are also healing while they are doing this damage, which is not something Holy Priest can do. All of the abilities of Holy Priest were basically doing just damage. So if they had to heal someone, they would have to immediately stop their damage and start healing. So that is a quite a big problem for healers in Mythic Plus. It's the reason why quite a few healers, as we will see, 
have not been able to be meta for a while because they simply don't have ways to keep doing damage while they keep healing so that's one of the main differences between mistweaver monk and holy priest even if they show to have similar damage it's much more in favor of mistweaver monk we then move on to one of these clear examples because the clear example is restoration shaman Restoration Shaman has clear cut the highest AoE damage out of all healers when it comes to consistent damage over time. Very, very simple as well. Nowhere near the plethora of buttons of Monk. They have Chain Lightning and they have Healing Rain with the Talent to do AoE damage. And every once in a while, Flame Shock and Lava Burst. And that's it. That's the damage they're going to be using. They can now grab Stormkeeper from their talents to do some burst damage on demand. But the problem, of course, for Shaman is that with the exception of some 30 to 40% of your damage, perhaps a bit less, of your Acid Rain, all of your damage is going to be casted. It's going to be hard casted with Chain Lightning, which means every single time you have to stop healing, your DPS will drop tremendously. That's one of the main issues of Shaman. It's why they were never meta before Shadowlands. It's only after Shadowlands came out and gave them ways to continue to do damage while they could still heal, like for example, Vesper Totem, like for example, Raging Vesper Vortex, like for example, their tier set, procking, instacast, guaranteed crit chain heals. All those things were allowing them to continue to do damage. Now, in Dragonflight, their base AoE damage is still very high, but they have to stop to heal, which is a big issue. Also, back to the perk of the Monk, which can hit multiple targets, Restoration Shaman is capped at 3 with Chain Lightning. So it looks very good on 4 targets, it's gonna look less good on 10. So that's another big issue for Restoration Shaman. Going next to Restoration Shaman to something that is also possibly the best overall of all of the healers, it's Holy Paladin. Holy Paladin is in the same category of Mistweaver, in the sense that they continue, they can continue to do damage as they continue to heal, because they have their general core rotation abilities that have to do damage, like your Crusader Strike, your Judgment, and your Hammer of Wrath. The big change is that in this expansion you are basically replacing Ashen Hallow with Consecration, which is amazing. It's the best type of damage you would want as a healer because you click Consecration once and then you don't have to worry about it for 12 seconds until you click it again. It's very very good. And as a matter of fact it's perhaps a little bit overtuned given the amount of damage you're doing with just one button every 12 seconds without any synergy, any planning required, just click it once, every once in a while, and it does this much damage. Nearly 30% of your damage on four targets is like 9000 DPS, just done by Consecration, which is quite massive. The rest of the build will play around like a whack-a-mole, right? You want to put Holy Shock on as many targets as possible, because you're playing with Glimmer of Light, which means every time you Holy Shock, Glimmer of Light will do damage to all of them. Of course, this is helped tremendously by your Divine Toll, making a comeback in Dragonflight, so it allows you nearly every pool and surely every big pool to constantly have Divine Toll to spread your uh, Holy Shock to everyone, if you are thinking about doing damage rather than healing in Mythic Plus, as you should, by the way. Very, very good damage as a Holy Paladin. You know, these tests, these 26 to 28 thousand dps tests done by holy paladin weren't even done using avenging wrath weren't even done they were done a couple of times using avenging crusader and that doesn't even do that much for your aoe damage doesn't even help that much it's for more healing it's not even dps so it looks better even when you consider things like for example consecration won't be capped at four targets Shield of the Righteous won't be capped at four targets. Holy Shock and the spreading of Glimmer of Light won't be capped at four targets. So even pulling more mobs than just these four on these target dummies will still increase your damage as opposed to cap your damage like for some other healers like Resto Shaman or Holy Priest which don't gain nearly as much DPS as they add more and more targets. While Holy Paladin can still grow a little bit more in that regard. So still looks very very good overall holy paladin does now onto something quite sketchy quite weird which is preservation evoker preservation evoker is quite sketchy because they are literally going to be pulling out this dps with basically four buttons 
We are talking about Fire Breath, one of your hold to cast and get the max rank of the cast button. We're talking about Azure Strike, which is your insta-cast ability that hits three enemies. We're talking about Disintegrate, which is your the equivalent of your combo spender, and then Deep Breath, which is your big cooldown. They can get upwards of 30,000 DPS, if not more. This also is very good on multiple targets because they are not capped as i said to four targets so if anything their damage here is quite restrictive this spec could be easily the strongest healer when it comes to big pulls in mythic class because fire breath plus deep breath combined have by far by a wide margin at the moment the most damage out of all healers in terms of aoe a, a preservation evoker could be just clicking fire breath and deep breath once on 10 targets once in like three seconds and it would take a holy priest or a mystery monk like 10 seconds to match up that amount of damage that's how how overloaded these two abilities are at the moment for for preservation evoker which is good for, 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 for the spec, of course, it's good because it means you have more time to keep healing. What's also very good is that your filler ability, the one you're going to be spamming every time you have a few GCDs available, Azure Strike is instant. It's not a Chain Lightning, it's not hard cast. So you can just weave it in, in and out, hitting three targets every once in a while. It's also not nearly as annoying as the insta cast of Priests, which is Holy Nova, which requires you to get close to the enemies. Azure Strike is ranged as well. So. It does have quite some powerful ways to do damage, even though they are mostly clamped in burst, in very, very small segments of damage, which could be abused by some very, very good groups in Mythic Plus, right? The elite top tier groups pulling 10 packs at once just because of the damage of this combo of Preservation Evoker, perhaps somewhat reminiscent of the combo of, for example, Ash and Hallow of a, of a Paladin in the good old days, or something like the Boon of the Ascended of Priests with their burst damage. It's somewhat similar to that degree of, of burst potential for Preservation Evoker. The consistent damage and the damage outside of this cooldown is, of course, by far the lowest out of all healers, but that's expected for, for Evoker. We are leaving for last the spec with the most RNG and the spec that is going to be the most volatile to gauge how powerful it's going to be because it is Restoration Druid. Restoration Druid is volatile because of course they have Convoke the Spirits and also it's volatile because it's going to be difficult to gauge how powerful they are if you want to or not want to include Heart of the Wild. Because you know Heart of the Wild is a five minute cooldown, right? So. It's, it's quite difficult to put it in, in how much damage they do, in a little bit of testing, you know. Are you gonna count Heart of the Wild, which literally means 30% more damage, or are you not going to count Heart of the Wild? So in the two different ranges of damage, with or without cooldowns, the Restoration Druid can flip-flop between 25 to 26,000 damage and then 33 to 34,000 damage, making it the, the highest, among the highest of the healers in terms of AoE damage. The rest, of course, of the Restoration do it is quite simple put down your sunfires to spread on everyone and then put down your moonfire you know three four times after that it starts getting a little bit too many uh, gcds wasted on a single target ability and then start spamming starfire for aoe damage that's it stay in your moonkin form get out your convoke the spirits and hope that you high roll a full moon or a starfall that's it that's basically it for Restoration Druid. It is still good. It is quite good that you have so much damage coming out of your Sunfire and your Moonfire because, once again, they are dots, which gives you time to do healing and put down healing on your targets, bring them back to be healthy with a bunch of hots on them so you can go back to do some Starfire spam for damage. Also to this, we can add the other surviving Covenant ability for Restoration Druid, Adaptive Swarm which doesn't do nearly enough in AoE. It's, it's probably better in single target or on two target fights and whatnot. So in AoE, it's not going to count for too much damage, but it's, it's a decent enough profile if you want to count the five minute burst window of your Heart of the Wild overall for Rest of the Druid. It still has its, its main power in the way you can spread very quickly your Sunfire for damage and the fact that you can in fact, do more damage on five, six, seven, or eight targets. You're not going to be as nearly as limited as a few other healers who seem to be doing well on three to four targets, but the more targets you had, the more trouble they have. 
you know, doing more damage. Resto Druid is decent in that regard. It's not as good as Mr. Remonk, it's not as good even as Preservation Evoker, but it's better than a few others like Discipline, like Holy, Priest, and like Restoration Shaman. So this, for the moment, is the current situation of all healers when it comes to AoE damage with Mythic Plus in mind. There are, of course, two big caveats to this damage. Caveat number one, how much of this damage can continue when you have to stop to heal? Because it is going to be very important in Mythic Plus. So the answer would be for specs like Resto Shaman, for specs like Holy Priest, the answer is going to be not that much. For specs like Holy Paladin, for specs like Mistover Monk, the answer is going to be a lot of it. Most of it, in fact, can continue while doing damage, and the same goes for Discipline, even though they have the lowest damage right now. And then you have specs in the middle, like Preservation Evoker with their massive dot of Fire Breath and Restoration Druid with their dots on enemies which can weave in and out of healing, even though not fully. And then you have the second caveat of this AoE damage, which is how much more damage do you gain or how much more damage do you lose compared to the rest if you keep adding more and more targets. Is your damage basically restricted by only hitting four targets, like for example Preservation Evoker, which can hit way more targets and do way more burst damage even on eight or ten targets, or were you looking good or better than you actually are just because we saw these tests on four targets, like for example Holy Priest or Restoration Shaman, which seem to do quite well on four targets, but if you were, for example, to double the targets up to eight, they would be doing considerably worse as opposed to a spec like Holy Paladin or to a spec like Mistover Monk, which wouldn't be doing nearly as bad, wouldn't be losing nearly as much damage, even if you were adding more targets. It would be something along the lines of, if you add a fifth target, a Restoration Shaman is going to gain 500 DPS, while a Mistover Monk is going to be gaining 3000 DPS. That is the level of scaling you would be seeing by adding more targets. So that is something to keep in mind when looking at these initial numbers and demanding some buffs for some of these specs or requesting some nerfs. So just for a feel good moment, because this didn't feel too good for priests in this video, I can tell you just one thing. I can tell you that Discipline and Holy have easily the strongest single target damage at the very least. As a matter of fact, Holy Priest's single target damage is so strong, it's more than twice as much damage as a Restoration Druid or a Mistover Monk. So at least you have that, my dear Priest players. You do have the strongest single target damage out of all of the healers. Now, with this being said and done, we can stop on this Sunday after we have looked at all of the damage profiles currently in the beta for the healers, with of course an eye to Mythic Plus for Dragonflight. We will see, now that we have the picture of the damage of the healers, we will be able to see in the next few days and weeks if any changes are going to modify this status quo of the damage of healers. But for now, I'm going to leave you to the rest of your Sunday, last day of the weekend. Thanks, of course, as usual, first in line to all of my Patreon supporters for contributing and supporting me and this channel to provide you all with some more WoW content. You can also then support, however, in other ways that don't include spending money to me and my channel, which is liking and commenting down below, as well as subscribing to the channel, which are all completely free. So it's not really that big of an effort for the moment, at least. Eventually, I'm sure YouTube will start demanding money out of everyone, but for now, it's still free. Lastly, of course, you can follow me on Twitter, as well as if you're interested to subscribe into my Patreon right over these two links, you will also get access to my Discord server. If you want to have a chat, ask some questions, you know, feedback about the previous content or what content you would like to see in the future, I'm usually available on Discord as well. Now it's time to leave, however. Thank you guys for watching, see you guys soon, and in the meantime, eh, this was too much. Oh. Much better. Much better. I need to lower it down, man. It's too heavy. To my dear, delicate eyes. <laughs>